Good morning from a literal field in the middle of nowhere. I am at the Central New York Fiber Festival. I just parked and I'm getting ready to go over and have a look at all of the yarns and fiber on offer. I'm also excited to see some sheep and just have a nice Saturday morning. So come along with me and let's go look at some yarn.
it has been two and a half hours. It's about 1230. I got here just at 10 when the festival started. Uh, somehow my backpack is now full of yarn. Weird how that happened. But I think I'm going to drive home, get settled, and then we can talk about what I got. Welcome back to my yarn room where my channel is suffering from its casual technical difficulties once again. I filmed this whole nice recap when I came back from the yarn fest the same day. I wanted it all fresh in my mind and when I was editing this video a week later I realized there's no audio. So once again sorry for my ongoing technical difficulties. <laughs> my channel is slowly getting up and running even though I'm learning a lot along the way. So I'm just going to talk over the footage that I already filmed because I have already used some of the yarn. It's kind of been split up and put away in its various areas of my yarn room. So I don't think it makes a ton of sense for me to try to go pull it all out and refilm a new segment anyhow. So when I arrived at the Fiber Festival, my strategy was to do a lap, look at everything, kind of keep my budget in mind, see which products maybe stuck with me that I definitely wanted to buy or maybe wanted to buy. Try to look at everything first. That also made it easier for me to film a little to show in the video, but it was mainly an attempt to quell my shopping habit. So this sort of worked in that I very successfully did a lap of the main show area and looked at everything slowly and filmed everything and kind of talked to a lot of the business owners and didn't spend any money and then I went back and went through a little more slowly and looked at things in more detail and made some purchases and then I noticed that I actually missed a large portion <laughs> not a large portion but I mean like maybe a quarter to a third of the booths were in a separate chunk off to the side that I thought was like food vendors, but it was in fact more wool. So maybe technically I went over budget, but not by a ton and not for lack of trying. <laughs> you know, after my initial successful lap and then shop, I did the same thing in the other half. And overall, it was a really fun day. There was a lot of great product to look at. There was a lot of cute animals to look at. I had a very, very nice time browsing by myself. I did not come home with a huge amount of yarn, but I did come home with an amount that makes me happy. One of the things that I was generally shopping for when I was there was minis, because as you know, I have my kind of ongoing fingering weight superwash granny stripe blanket that I use for minis and scraps and it makes a nice souvenir sometimes when maybe I don't want to spend 50 or 100 dollars on a large quantity of yarn it's nice to be able to just spend a small amount but get a little yarn souvenir to be able to add to my blanket and then you know my blanket is ultimately just all memories either from souvenir yarn or scrap yarn from projects that were larger so I kind of kept that in the back of my mind like maybe a couple large skeins will grab my attention and that's what I'll want to take home but if I'm not in love with something stick to the minis. So I did find this little kind of aqua and green mini mix from a booth called Toby Roxanne. I honestly I like to get minis in colors that I wouldn't necessarily wear like this is a very vibrant variegated and it's not something that I would want necessarily like a sweater out of or anything but it's a color that I'm attracted to and I think works perfectly for the sake of a souvenir. I brought home two skeins of this fingering weight wool from Handmade Travels. Well, this was really interesting. I did stay and talk with this business owner for a long time. It was First of all, the, some of the softest wool I've ever felt. It's very, very nice. She talked a lot about her process. I guess this person is now local to Syracuse in central New York, but she used to live in Australia. So she has, you know, shepherd friends who sell her the wool. She has it milled in New Zealand and then is shipped to New York for her to dye it. And it's some of the finished pieces, samples that she had up, 
were genuinely incredibly soft. And I was kind of attracted to her boots in the first place because she had a lot of tonals bordering on solids, which is, I think, more wearable. So I was browsing those. But once I felt the samples, I really, really wanted to bring something. I did decide on this gorgeous neutral brown. Um, it's kind of a reddish brown beige tonal. It's really, really pretty. And I honestly, I had to have something in that super soft wool. And I thought that this was the best neutral. Another large quantity that I got is this gorgeous silvery mohair. It's a super fine kid and silk laced brushed mohair from Yarnhuga. They had a lot of very affordable, nice fiber blends. Uh, their booth is kind of overwhelming to me. I did look around for a while. The only thing I decided to take home was this, mostly because it's 900 yards. It's very soft and 900 yards in one hank means this is enough to hold double for a full sweater out of just the one hank. And in keeping with my goal of making more neutral wearable garments, I thought bringing home a nice gray would be good. I mean, it's also possible that I could use this to kind of mute a less neutral base yarn if I need to, which I've done before. The only other garment quantity I brought home were these two gorgeous boucle skeins from Mabel's Cables. I'm telling you, this booth stopped me in my tracks. Specifically, this colorway of this boucle yarn stopped me in my tracks. I was strolling by, trying not to go in, and then I saw this one and was hooked, and honestly, Mabel, I don't even know if that's the business owner's name, but I'm going to call her Mabel. Mabel has my inner palette like down. I loved everything in this booth and I wish I could have just bought out the whole booth, but I convinced myself to just buy this red rose colorway of her DK weight boucle. And she only had these two skeins, so I didn't even really have to restrain myself. I just bought everything she had but they're stinking gorgeous. These, I, I don't know, just like all of the pinks and reds and chartreuse and forest green and the rare spots of sky blue on this cream boucle is just too good. I, I couldn't walk away from this. It's truly my favorite thing that I got at the Fiber Festival. There was another cute booth that at the moment, I don't have the name of. I'm going to have to dig out that business card somewhere. They had a couple, they had a lot of minis. They had a big bin of minis on the ground and another large basket on the table. So like I said, kind of in the back of my mind, if I love a yarn dyer, if, I, if I'm interested, but I'm not in love with any of the skeins, look at the minis. So I found this one that Truly just looks like strawberry shortcake. So was I going to leave that? Obviously not. And then this other pretty kind of beige one that just has a bunch of splashes of very vibrant cool tones in it. And I thought it was really cute and just a nice addition to my granny stripe blanket like I talked about. Also from Mabel's Cables, which I didn't look at or even open until I got back to the craft room to film this, was like a little gift with purchase. Somebody that was helping out Mabel in the booth like handed me this little box and I kind of assumed it would just be like candy or something. Uh, but when I got back to the art room and I opened it up on camera, which wouldn't the audio have been great to have for this, it was a little mini. <laughs> so it was just a little mini skein from <laughs> Mabel's Cables. And it, you know, what, what makes you happier than Surprise Yarn? This is pretty pink uh, mini skein that actually fit in really well with all of the other mini skeins that I bought on purpose. They looked really cute together. I also got a little tiny sample from a seller that had a bin of, you know, little tiny samples out for free, which good strategy. She had a lot of great stuff in her booth, but they all looked really cute together. You know, I bought the three full-size minis at two different booths. 
the free sample was from a different booth and I didn't even purposefully buy the little mini from Mabel's, but they, they all ended up going really well together. And that's part of the reason that I don't want to refilm this segment is because I already used them. I was so excited about them that I already added them to my granny stripe blanket. Another freebie that I got was this cutting of a jade plant. Somebody had a large box of these large jade plant cuttings out and I've been lately getting a lot into house plants and container gardening in general. So I was very thrilled about that. I'm, you know, I know jade plants are supposed to be very easy, but I, I have a bad history of trying to propagate things. So I'm doing my best. It's, it's doing okay so far. And that was just another nice little silver lining to walking around the festival that day. So I had a really fun time walking around the Central New York Fiber Arts Festival by myself. It was a nice environment. Everybody was super friendly, you know, guests and booths alike. Um, there was a good variety of stuff to look at. It's a relatively small festival, but you know, I've been to smaller and the booths have a really, really varied and rich selection of things to look at. So it's definitely worth a stop. Because I went alone, I don't know if they charge per person or per vehicle, but I paid $5. I think $6 maybe. They always do it on the weekend of Worldwide Knit in Public Day. So it's nice June weather. There's a jovial atmosphere. They put out a lot of tables near the food trucks for people to eat, but also to sit and knit, which I did for a while. I took a break in the middle. I wanted to have a drink, but not be the rude person with a drink in a booth full of yarn. So I just sat down and worked on my knitting for a while and enjoyed the atmosphere. It was a really, really nice way to spend a Saturday morning. For me, my top three highlights of this yarn festival were definitely uh, Mabel's Cables was my favorite yarn booth. I loved all of her colorways and I'm definitely going to keep an eye on her business in the future because it, she has some really, really nice stuff and I just absolutely vibe with all of the different yarns that she has out. I loved meeting those little teeny tiny Australian shepherd puppies. They were so stinking cute. And I also loved this really great booth. I believe it was called like braided with love or braided love or something to that effect. She had some really creative and gorgeous furniture that she had reupholstered with fabric she made from upcycled braided fabric. And honestly, I stood there forever trying to convince myself that I don't need them. Um, there was like benches, chairs, especially the little footstools. I really wanted a little footstool. She has a gorgeous eye for color and choosing which of these reclaimed fabrics to braid together to make these upholstered seats. They were so gorgeous. It was so unique. I've never seen anything that looked quite like it and they were impeccable. I truly loved them and I hope to have the opportunity to buy a piece from her in the future. The main thing holding me back was my mischievous little cats and the fact that I think that they would absolutely ruin one of her gorgeous art pieces. So I did not invest in one this time, but I took some B-roll. I talked to her for a while and I definitely hope to be able to in the future. So I apologize for my technical difficulties. Once again, I hope the audio wasn't too jarring. And I hope that it was still enjoyable for you to be able to come along with me to the Central New York Fiber Arts Festival this year. It's nice to be able to do the same thing two years in a row. You know, my channel's over a year old now. This is the first thing that I've done twice because I, it's on an annual basis. So that's kind of neat. If you enjoyed this one, I hope you'll consider subscribing to check back in for future videos. And who knows, I might be doing another one at this Fiber Fest next year. Uh, in the short term, I plan on going to Rhinebeck this fall. I've already got tickets to Indie Untangled, and I'm hoping to go to Wool and Folk and, of course, the big New York Wool and Sheep Festival as well. I've got plans to stop at a bunch of the New York Fiber Trail this summer, and as always, I've got projects lined up until the cows come home. There's so much on my plate. I'll never finish half of it, but I hope you're along for the ride. So click the subscribe button, check back in, and we can keep crafting together. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.